Hi, and welcome to the channel. made up my mind on which aircraft I'm going to build for Project X. This is based on my experiences with the kit and customer service, so it may be different for you. And also based on what I want from an aircraft. If you look at the video linked here, when I started Project X, I had three choices. The Sparsec, Fisher, or my own design. All of which were going to be SSDR aircraft. So what is SSDR? In the UK it's single seat deregulated. Although you have to have a license it allows you to carry out your own maintenance and you do not have to have a permit of airworthiness carried out annually on the aircraft. You are solely responsible for the airworthiness of the aircraft. And for a land-based aircraft without a recovery parachute system, it has to have a maximum takeoff weight of less than 300 kilograms and a stall speed of less than 35 knots or a wing loading of less than 25 kilograms. So how do the two aircraft meet up with those requirements? The SD-1 has a maximum takeoff weight of 240 kilograms, 60 kilograms below the maximum. A stall speed of 33.8 knots, so 1.2 knots below the maximum, and a wing loading of 40 kilograms per square meter, so 15 kilograms per square meter over. But it still meets up with the SSDR requirement on the grounds it either has to have the stall speed or the wing loading or both. The Fisher has a maximum takeoff weight of 295 kilograms, 5 kilograms below the maximum, a stall speed of 30 knots. 5 knots below the maximum and a wing loading of 24.4 kilograms per square meter, 0.6 kilograms below the maximum. What about useful load? Well, both of them have a similar useful load, 250 pounds, 113 kilograms, although that varies slightly with the SD1 depending on the engine option. With the Fisher, I may well be able to uh, increase that working load by reducing the empty weight from the 400 pounds stated by Fisher. And I'll do that by using the Auratex 600 covering system, which should be lighter than the Stitz traditional method used for covering by around about 30 pounds. So the pros and cons. Looking at the SD-1 tail kit and what I had and produced and my experiences from it, you could produce a very nice uh, aircraft. It was lacking in the uh, customer service side and the quality of the foam let the kit down to my mind. The aircraft structure is completely different to that of the Fisher in the format that it is a monocoque type construction with foam formers and ribs. And as such, the specification of the aircraft is so tight that there is little room for manoeuvre and modification to how you build the aircraft. The Fisher kit, to my mind's weaknesses, are in the lack of build manual, although instructions are included on the plan, and there was a slight lack in the larger section block required for the fin and rudder. The positive side for the Fisher is it allows a certain amount of flexibility in the build. So what do I mean by flexibility in the build? Well, it allows you to carry out refinements and modifications to a certain degree, as I did with the elevator trim tab here. 
it's not quite a conventional build with its geostatic uh, design but it is relatively traditional and therefore it is quite easy to build by anybody who has carried out uh, construction of model aircraft or boats. Mind you, that's true for both kits. Both kits gave you the opportunity to produce a final product which would be usable on your aircraft, gave you the experience of the build techniques required and the methods of building. And at the end of the day, both manufacturers discount the full kit by the cost of the tail kit that you bought. The Fisher kit allows you to produce more components from the tail, but the Sparsec kit did give you a good taste of their construction methods. So, which one am I going to go for? Well, looking at my uh, requirements for operation, I fly from grass strips, both aircraft are capable of that. I fly to other airfields, both aircraft are capable of that. The Sparsec is faster and sportier to look at, one might say. But at the end of the day, both aircraft meet up with my basic flight requirements. The Sparsec may be slightly better at doing the cruising to and from places with its slightly faster cruise speed. But it's down to the aesthetics and the build experience. And for me, the Fisher aircraft gives me an opportunity to use my design experience from the past. So, to that end, that is the kit I have purchased. And I have asked for it to be delivered in October. Why October, when I could have it earlier than that? Well, I'm planning on flying a lot this summer to catch up with the lack of flying had due to lockdowns. And I also need to sort out space within my workshop area to be able to do the full build. To that end, there will be a slight change in when the build videos were coming out. Rather than being on Saturdays at 4 o'clock UK time, they will be on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock UK time. Going forward, I will hopefully get more videos of flying with the Sherwood Cub going, and uh, there will still be some videos for the build on the Fisher tail, as and when I get some components together to continue to do some of the build and prep work going forward. So hopefully you will stick with me going forward. Thank you for watching and catch you another day. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.